G'day, g'day. Welcome to Graves in Australia Diecast Salvage. Today we're having a police escort, and this is a Shuko Audi 80, or sometimes known as the Audi Fox. But um, they're giving us an escort of what we're doing in today's episode, where we'll be trying to fix up this Audi 80 or Audi Fox if you like and its sister car the VW Passat the B1 and this is what they call a variant or to me here in Australia we call it a station wagon so let's unload these vehicles and we'll have a closer look at them at the workbench so, welcome to my little work area here at Graves in Australia. And let's have a look at these vehicles. We'll start off with this one. It is a Shuko Audi 80. Hopefully, you can read all of that. Nice detail down the bottom. Has opening doors. It has a <clears throat> an opening bonnet. As well, and the boot lid opens. Only two things wrong with well, three things wrong with it is that there's something wrong with the the front and the wheels not turning properly the decal on the bonnet as you can see is rather dirty and yeah yuck all right and the rear bumper is curved up slightly but everything else is there so There's that one. Here is the civilian version. We have the door, and this is the passenger side door. It is missing the bonnet. It is missing the driver side door. It has a broken bumper. It is missing a number plate, but otherwise it has everything. So, there's that one. And then, of course, we have its sister, which is the VW Passat. Now, this is the variant in German. In the UK, they call them estates. In Australia, we call them station wagons. Now, the tail gate does work. It has a good rear bumper. It is missing its tail lights. It does have its number plate. It does have both doors. And it has the bonnet. It has the engine. It has the grille. And it has the front bumper. It is missing one of the hubs or hub caps, if you like, but otherwise, uh, and it's also got uh, missing its window unit. It's what it's missing as well. So, with the three cars, the part, the bonnet, and the right hand door, we'll make, we'll use to make a mould for this car the thing that's missing on both cars I'm sure I've got it somewhere but I don't know where it's disappeared to since my move is the dash and the steering wheel but seeing as this one has it 
or make a copy from this one. So we'll be back in a moment. We'll take one of these apart. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll take one of these apart because they all come apart the same way. And uh, we'll carry on from there. So just do it to annoy some people out there. We're going to take the most perfect one out of the three apart. Because we've got to get to the, the dash and the steering wheel of this one anyway. So we'll have to pull it apart to get to it. So we we'll, might as well start from here. As you notice, there's no posts. So there's no drilling. These come apart by pulling the rear bumper, pulling the front bumper, and everything else just about falls apart on it. And there's the, the boot lid. We'll stick that in there. We'll put that in there. We'll put that in there. We're not going to paint strip this car, so we're just pulling it apart so we can get two items we need. There's the interior. And once the interior comes out, you can pull out the front, front grille, which has the chrome parts for the engine. So we'll put that in there. And... We have wire type wheels for it. So I dare say, I oh know I'm procrastinating. That, that axle might be bent a little bit, hence why we weren't rolling. Or she's needs to be pulled out a little bit anyway that's that's for me to look at later the bonnet is held in place with the dash now we'll just gently Pull that out. This is the part that's missing on the other two vehicles. So I'll need to put that safekeeping. And then the window unit should come out. I thought this would be an easy one to pull apart, but it's not. There we go, the window unit comes out. So I can put that in there. And this part here, I'll get my piece here, will come up and that will release the, the bonnet and it will release the doors. And like I said, we don't need to strip this one down any further. And what it is, we've got the part that we need, so we can we can sit that back on its base. If I have it the right way, might help. Sit that back on its base, and we'll get onto the other. Now, if I actually put it in the right way, there's a little tab on the front. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that front axle is bent a little bit, so we probably need to work on it a little bit more. Uh, but we'll keep it in the background. Again, I'll just take the... Bumper out. Boot out. What was this that fell out? 
Was that the number plate? No, that's one of the one of the bits that held the rear bumper in place. Let's that in there. There we go. The parts. All right. So that's why the that part is broken because that should be all one piece. So we'll probably super glue it back because as you can see it's been glued once before. Put that in there and see that window unit here has been glued in. So we'll have to see if we can Yes, we can get that out without the press. As you can see, oh, we'll need to. Is that inside or outside? It's hard to see. Anyway, but we have another window unit for that one. Take the grill out. Let's have a look at the. See that one isn't as sloppy as what this one is. See how that's all, all sloppy. So what we may do is put that one on this one. Right, so we know that one's got good. And this one, because we've got the problem, and we've got a fair amount of work to do on it is that we may do a wheel swap and if we do a wheel swap on it then I can take one of the hubs from, from these wheels and stick it on that one so we can put that one and uh, that one together again front bumper rear bumper that we'll be making a copy of comes up that's a, a windscreen that I made previously using the UV resin and like I said this was before I moved back home to Gray's End uh, we take the the light and the engine out that leaves us with this that in there now what haven't what I haven't shown you is how to get the doors now in here I think it's showing up on camera you lever this piece out or up a little bit Try and keep you in, in a good shot. See how that's lifting up? It's come off the pin. We just need it to do it on the same side, same on that side. I generally like to keep one of the doors on so we know which way that this piece here goes back into the vehicle. So if I do that. The door hinges come in from the top and go in there. So when it comes time to reassembly, excuse me while I try and find that door. Of course I didn't have it in properly. See, when you do things on camera, it wasn't a door, it was the bonnet. See? So we can put that aside. So when it comes time to reassembly, is if you have if you put your doors in first, you poke it through, and then you line it up with these pins up the up here, so it can make sure you the right way around. So it's a very nice 
little mechanism. Just like so. And our doors are back in place. So we'll move on to the next sequence. I heard you. I heard you. He said you forgot to take the taillights out of this one. Well, here they are. They're held in by a couple of pins. They go into the back of the casting. So we'll put them into our box. And I did take the siren off, the siren, the beacon off this one. Of course, we're going to use it to make a mold for this one. So, all right, let's get on to the next sequence, which is, you'll have to find out. Well, you guessed it. We're in the official, world famous, Graves in Australia, Dyke House Salvage, Stripper Venue. So, we have our strippers already, our two participants are ready plus the extras like the doors and the bonnet so let's get going Not very spe spectacular today. Our, with our caustic soda, in that this was sitting overnight exposed. Um, ran out of time sort of yesterday through other commitments. But it is going to do our job. As you can hear, it is still bubbling away, we're just giving a bit of a swishy swish. On there. And um, yeah, I have to be I have to be a little bit careful as to with the caustic soda in that we have a septic system here. We're not on town water. Well, I shouldn't say we're not on town water. We're not on the town sewerage because we're in country area of New South Wales. They haven't caught up with um, with waste disposal here, so we we're, we're on on septic tanks and caustic soda and septic tanks do not mix. So um, I'm disposing this of in a different way, so I can't pour it down the kitchen sink or laundry sink uh, like I was able to down in Sydney so we are, we will be moving over to a soda blaster um, so that will be in the next couple of months in the meantime I'll dispose of this in a different way all right I'll catch you when we've got a pair of naked vehicles usual method of polishing these cars up a little bit is I use a brass bristle brush and I use a, a, a scourer for it. This is all we're doing is just polishing up the items as we need. As you can see, we're a lot more shinier. Once I do it that, I come over to the scourer. I'm right-handed, so. Just to make life a little bit easier. With fat fingers and tiny parts. We do do the insides, of course. I know you're not seeing much there. It's 
a little bit hard to get you in but hopefully the rest of the, the castings will become shiny shiny like that and that's when I shall bring you back so my apologies that you guys didn't see the first part of making the bonnet on this one um, a few technical issues especially with me raising my voice because we were in the DMC tavern but in any case we're doing the second half to put two piece mold just made a, a Lego we've used some tape just to stop the to stop leaks so we're making the second half I've used petroleum jelly as a as a release so we're mixing up the two-part liquid silicon I'm not a big fan of of this one because it's all clear um, I'm used to the, the white silicon and the hardener which is usually colored um, so the it's very hard to tell whether the the items are mixed so I'm just using a a measuring cup and putting it into into this just makes it a little bit easier now where is my stirrer I'm a stirrer myself but just to get everything out of the out of this one and now we'll do the other half this has got A and B that's like um, silicon putty which I like better as a two-part it's a little bit too much eagle that's a little bit too much yeah that's about right so we can settle that in there don't need to degas the items I just need to get the things to flow so once it's in the in the cup that aside where we're not going to make a mess we mix and if it, this was colored we would see a uniform color because it's a small amount we should be about right now we'll hold it up high so we don't get air bubbles down the bottom and it's just a simple case of pouring because if you keep the stream thin will help take the air bubbles out uh, this will self level and I'm trying to stay in the one spot so that it can spread out by itself and of course if, if you do get bubbles while she's still in this form all you need to do is put a, a lighter or a match 
flame over the top that will help take it out now that we've got the thing covered we can speed up the process a little bit in in our pool and this may still have some of our original pour in there which is this gel part that we're trying to pull up that you might be that you might be seeing about to come down but that should not affect the pour that we're doing so what I'll do is I'll just push it to one side because it's staying up near the top away from the piece that we're making so I'll bring you back when we demold this part and I should have the missing door um, made up as well. So I'll continue on with that. You enjoy yourself and I'll see you in a moment for the next segment. All right, let's um, pull this one down and let's see what we got. As you can see here, it is nice and hard. There are other things I like, wish they were nice and hard, but unfortunately, when you get older, they don't go hard no more. Sorry, Joyce. All right, we can push out from underneath, because all I've done is put a tape on the bottom. off this is only to um, prevent any leaks if we had any in the first round we we did have some leaks in the first round but that can be chucked away now and we should have an easier push now there we go and you should be able to just see a faint separating line there and we pull our casting apart and we can pull that out and we should be ready so I was going to let that set up a little bit longer but um, as Marty from Matchbox Makeovers would say I'm happy with that so we'll see you in a moment um, when it comes to doing the the resin part the casting itself see you there okay it's part making time these are the two the two part silicon molds we've made this is part B and part A of the two-part um, casting resin that I'm using. And what you're seeing down the bottom here is the, um, because you're always going to make more than what you need for the original, so that we can make some more stuff down here. So what happens now is we pour, pour part A and part B into a cup we mix it together we pour it in here and we'll see if we can watch the cure because this has a thermal a thermal reaction which is heat 
that's getting ready to buy this chemical. Another reason why to wear gloves, just in case you get, because I've had an allergic reaction to the resin. So, with the gloves, safety first. Let's give it a, a mix. And we pour it in. This is what's called a, a, a squash. Just make sure we go into all our corners. And you can understand why they call it a squash method. Because that's exactly what we're doing with it. Now because this is fairly translucent, we should be able to see, see that cure. So while I'm dealing with the with the overflow, so to speak. Excuse me while I go with that because we don't have much working time. Again, so to speak, not much working time. Squash Mevit. Squash Mevit. Because this is already starting to firm up. It's not real runny. So the reaction is, going, is taking effect. So we'll be back in a moment and we should see some bit of white in, in here and um, I'll take the, the spare away. So I'll be back in a moment. See you there. Okay, time to see how we went with our casting. Now there'll be some work to do. How much? As mentioned, these parts are not available um, from the likes of uh, model supplies and um, recover toy. So, just a quick clean up of the the flashing. This is the very first casting out, so I will need to have a look and I see we do have a a mark corresponding with with this here so again we're just filling that out and there's that mark just there on the on the mould, so it may be a case of redoing that first half of the mould again because the underside is fine. The noise that you're hearing at workmen underneath the house, um, because we're having the house re stumped underneath. So, uh, might put that there and recast that one. So, let's have a look at our door. Again, have not looked at this beforehand. Take some of the rubbish away that the, um, that the, the likes of Steve Flowers like to leave on. And we can clean this up. So. 
I'll go back to here and here. That's our door. I've also got to clean that up. I'll clean up the bonnet and we'll come back and have a, very, a good comparison look at the two of them. See you in a moment. As we, <coughs> excuse me, as we move on to making some more parts, we're going to try the, the UV hard resin, which is the same thing as the five second fix. But um, instead of having the little tube, we have this little container here, which is 200 grams. And here is the curing time. We've got a UV LED. It's the same thing what the ladies have when they go to get their fingernails done. You can either use it the way that I've got there, but if you have a tall item, you can stand it up this way. And and you get the same effect, especially if you've got a tall item that you want to do. But um, for our for what we want to do, we can lay it down flat like that. And what we're doing is we're making the front windscreen for the station wagon because that has no window unit in it whatsoever and we've used the the window unit from this Audi and we've all we've done is put it in at an angle this is the the roof part because our window back here doesn't fit the length of the wagon, of course. We're also having to make the rear bumper. What I've used is silicon putty. So let's see how we go. I've shaken the bottle up a little bit. Did I need to open the Break the seal. I'll bring you back in a moment. There we go. We have brain fade. We've got to take the stopper out of the bottle. Let's try this again. As you can see, it runs fairly freely. We'll just pull up on that so that we can. Spread it to all the corners. This will also help to take any air bubbles out that we may have created. Just making sure we're going in all the corners. So we can put that one underneath the light. So we'll put that in for 60 seconds. That should give our first set. While that's doing that, I'll do the, the bumper just to the side. I'm just, I'm just using the the resin as a well this UV resin. It's a little bit more handy and I don't have to do a double mix using parts A and B. As um, as I did with the bumper and the and the door. Alright, that's our first set. So we'll just put the bumper in. That's just gone on the sensor by itself. I'm just having a look at the, 
the screen in the I know we're getting a bit of a white out from the from the curing unit from the UV light my apologies about that but from what I'm seeing on the screen she should be good once she's fully fully done anyway that's what we're going to do we're going to do that for about three minutes I'm not going to keep you here that long for it so we'll see you with the results now here we are with our Shuko 143 scale Audi 80 which is a red car and its sister the VW Passat variant in German or estate if you're in the UK station wagon if you're here in Australia so if you haven't watched the video this is what we've done with them and I'll start off with the the red Audi 80 I've gotten over my over my uh, problem with red cars on Audis this one we only painted it once anyway this arrived missing a right hand door missing a bonnet and the rear bumper was broken so we used those parts from the Passat and made resin copies we also we also did a wheel swap from a Hot Wheels because the um, one of the hubs on the original wheels was missing so we've created it new parts there's our bonnet the driver's side door the rear bumper and of course we've got a wheel swap and it is a roller which is very nice now what do we do on the Passat well the Passat was missing the complete window unit and it also had a hole in the roof because it used to be the yellow ADAC version now these never had rear windows or rear glazing I may put one in at a later stage but as you can see we've repainted it stripped it repainted it we've filled in the hole in the roof and we've made a window unit and the screen I made a copy from the the front half from the Audi 80 I made a mold and then I used the clear UV hard resin for it the side windows I've sleeved in a piece of plastic and here we are now I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gravesend Australia Diecast Salvage and I hope to catch you soon for the next episode thank you for watching bye for now